and don't forget to count to 16 once you see the first burn of the engines. Attention for the début de la séquence d'allumage lanceur. Top à 0 moins 20 secondes. Top largage MAVKM. Top allumage triétage. A 12 de DDO, attention pour le décompte final. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, unité, OUSC, décollage. We are off, hauling ourselves against the gravity of the Earth, all 310 tons. We're heading out east over the Atlantic Ocean, and we are burning five engines. Everything's going according to plan, he says. We have one on the core stage, and we have one on each booster. But it's the boosters which are doing all the work the right now. Their job is to get us away from the Earth. Gravity makes us stick to our planet and stops us flying off into space. But it also makes it very hard for us to leave, and we need lots of firepower to do that. That's why we call them boosters, because they give us a short but massive boost at the beginning of the flight to quite literally push us away. They are providing 80% of our thrust right now. That's 790 kilonewtons each. The parameters are normal. Look at the left-hand side of the screen. You'll see what we call the trajectory. All eyes on that. La propulsion du premier et du deuxième étage est dominale. Everything's going well. The all eyes on that are after launch, before it was the status panels. The uh, curve is the computer simulation of the scheduled altitude. The white dot on the curve is the actual position of the launch vehicle. A is the altitude and V is the velocity, the speed. So we are losing those boosters. They've burnt all their propellant. We don't need them anymore, so they fall back to Earth and we're shedding weight. And we have confirmation of that. The lighter they are, we are, the faster we go. It's a basic law of physics. Sir Isaac Newton discovered it. It's called the first law of dynamics. It helps us to understand gravity and most rocket science is based on it. I'm sure that uh, Sir Isaac Newton would be delighted to be watching this powerful machine defeating gravity. So we're burning the main core stage. It burns uh, for just under five minutes. And if you look at the bottom left-hand side of the screen, you can see that it's uh, a hammerhead shape, and that's to accommodate those boosters. Everything's going normally. A word about the confirmations of major events in the flight. We're seeing things happening at the right time. But we get uh, actual confirmations of those milestones very slightly later. That's uh, perfectly normal. It takes a little time for the information to get to the Les range operations manager. And he calls out those confirmations when he gets them. We're traveling at a speed of 2.36 kilometers an hour. And we're going faster and faster. We are climbing higher and higher, 104 kilometers above the Earth. Look at the top of the vehicle. That's the fairing. It has several jobs. Most notably, it's protecting the satellites from the rigors of the launch. The acoustic vibrations at liftoff, it's very loud. And friction, the launch is flying through the dense part of our atmosphere at very high speeds. So the outside of the fairing gets just a little bit hot. And uh, we are losing the fairing. We don't need it anymore. And the reason is because we're on the outer edge of the atmosphere now, which is about 100 kilometers deep. So any remaining gas up there is so thin. The satellites are now safe from the effects of friction. And we've had the confirmation. We've lost the fairing. The captain has switched off the seatbelt signs. And we can see our four babies for the first time. 
fonctionnement du moteur de deuxième étage, le bloc A est nominal. The gold structures are, are the O3B spacecraft. You can see the blue bits are the solar panels. It's incredible to think that it's taken us less than four minutes to get into space. It would take you an hour if you were driving by car. It's nothing, is it, really? Makes you realize how small and fragile our atmosphere is. Makes life possible here on Earth, but there's not much of it. So we'd better look after it. We're losing the second stage. It's switched off its engine and it's fallen away. On Soyuz, the engine igni ignition of the third stage is just a little bit different uh, from Ariane, if you're familiar with Ariane flights. With Ariane, we separate... With Ariane, we separate one stage before switching on the next. Uh, with Soyuz, it's the other way around. We switch on the third stage before switching off the engine on the second stage. And that's why we have a latticework structure in the middle of the vehicle. To separate the stages, we use pyrotechnic bolts and a set of springs, which literally ping the satellite away. And those are the same pyrotechnic charges that are used by airbags in your car, which is just one of the many spin-offs from space which have changed our lives here on Earth. We're looking at computer-generated images on the bottom left-hand side of the screen there. They're showing us what the experts have calculated is happening to the launcher and the satellites. Basically, the teams plan a very precise schedule of events based on extremely accurate predictions and they put all of that information into the computer. And these beautiful images are a simulation of those predictions. So quite literally every movement and every position that you see is based exactly on what has been planned for the flight. So the uh, everything's going according to plan. So take a look on the left-hand side of the screen. V, the velocity, we are travelling at 4.55 kilometres per second. 179 kilometers above the Earth. The Paris Air Show ended yesterday, and as always, it was an extremely busy event. The Paris Air Show was a great success. 